Hello, in this video, we will get the basic overview of the vectorscope. So, uh, before uh, moving into the vectorscope, uh, let us recall that uh, we already know that any color is uh, made up of uh, three primary colors, red, green and blue in uh, suitable intensity proportion that we know already. Now, if we recall that the color camera produces three output voltages that you can see that uh, these are nothing but VR, VG and VB and these output voltages are correspond to red intensity, green intensity and blue intensity present in the color signal. Now, by adding this VR, VG, VB into suitable proportion that you can see that you can add that VR, VG, VB into suitable proportion that is 0.3 VR plus 0.59 VG plus 0.11 VB, we can produce the luminance signal. Now here throughout the discussion, uh, we will call this VR as a simply R. We will denote this VG as G and VB as a simple B. So RGB are nothing but the VR, VG, VB that are voltages. Now, here, uh, since VR, VG, VB represents the color signal produced by the camera and this all VR, VG, VB presents in this Y signal. So, any of these two are transmitted and we already know in the color theory that VR minus Y and VB minus Y is actually transmitted. So, here you can see that vr minus y and vb minus y is transmitted now here uh, these signals are actually amplitude modulated uh, and this amplitude modulated is performed with a carrier with sub carrier frequency omega sub so let us see that these two signals are amplitude modulated and here for Amplitude modulation only single subcarrier frequency is available, and on this single subcarrier frequency, these two signals are modulated. So here we can see that the B minus Y component is modulated with zero degree shifted subcarrier, which is cos omega sub t, and R minus Y is modulated with 90 degree shifted subcarrier. After performing the AM modulation, both are get added and whatever the resultant signal will get is nothing but called chrominance signal or C signal. And this modulation scheme is called QAM, which is nothing but the quadrature amplitude modulation. So we can say that chrominance signal is nothing but the vector addition of R minus Y and B minus Y modulated on zero degree and 90 degree shifted subcarrier. So we can represent this chrominance signal as shown in the diagram here. So this C of T is nothing but the chrominance signal and it is made up of B minus Y component and R minus Y component. Here B minus Y component is on zero degree axis and R minus Y is displayed on the 90 degree axis because R minus Y is modulated with 90 degree subcarrier and this C of T is nothing but the resultant chrominance signal. Now here in bracket T is there. So what does it mean that value of this chrominance signal vary instantaneously with respect to time. So for each instant of time you will have different values of the chrominance signal. Now here uh, we we can we can say that uh, we can find out this resultant signal chrominance signal with the help of this formula so we know that we can find out the length of this vector with the help of this formula and we can also find out the angle with the help of this n inverse formula now here if we move ahead then us take an example for a pure red color let us assume that your camera is capturing pure red color 
so obviously if it is pure red color then there isn't any green component and blue component so we can say that from the output of color camera vr component will be present and let us say it is pure red fully bright so vr or r will be one and since there isn't any green and blue component so g and b will be zero so if we put this values of r g and b into this equations of r minus y and b minus y and you can say that since g and b are zero so these two terms will get vanish and r minus one y becomes only 0.7 into one which is 0.7 volt and b minus y becomes this first two terms are zero so it becomes minus 0.3 into one which is minus 0.3 volt so you can say that for pure red color uh, r minus y and b minus y uh, voltage values are 0.7 and minus 0.3 now we we can find out the magnitude and phase with the help of this formula and the answer will be magnitude of this resultant signal is nothing but uh, 0.762 and phase will be approximately 114 degree so here we can represent the vector corresponding to red color as shown in this graph uh, so this is nothing but approximately 114 degree angle and length of this vector is nothing but the 0.762. Now here uh, we have calculated the angle corresponding to pure red color. Now we can say that uh, any color is a combination of RGB in a suitable proportion. So for any color we will have different values of r ranging from 0 to 1 different proportion of g ranging from 0 to 1 and different proportion of b ranging from 0 to 1 so for different colors we will have some value of r g and b if we put these values into the equation of r minus y and b minus y over here then we will get the different values of r minus y and b minus y and we can find out the magnitude and phase for the corresponding RGB. So you will find out that for each color, we will get a unique angle. Yes, I repeat for each color, we will get a unique angle and we will also get some magnitude. So here uh, I, I can say that each color will have its own angle, but two different colors may have uh, same amplitude or same magnitude so in short i can say that no two colors will have different will have same angle so if two colors are different then they will have a different phase but there may be possibility that their length or magnitude of the vector is same so here uh, in this uh, diagram we can see that each color is having a unique or different phase so we can say that in a chrominant signal okay angle represents the color so if your chrominant signal is having different angle then you can say that that chrominant signal is correspond to different color so we can say that for chrominant signal uh, different angle is nothing but different color or different color means correspond to different angle now uh, and yes two different colors may have the same length of vector that is possible now let us uh, take the case of uh, saturation so here uh, if any color is pure then I will uh, call it as a hundred percent saturated color yes if it is pure then it is called hundred percent saturated color but if we add some other color into that pure color then that color becomes a desaturated color okay so let us take an example so here we have we have seen that for a red color r is one g and b are absent but let us take an example that uh, we add some white color into the red color so if you add some color over here if you add some color other color let us say white color into the pure color let us say pure red color so now that red will not be a pure color so that will become a desaturated color 
and yes since uh, I, I, I i say that we are we are adding white and in white color all rgb are present so here you can see that if you add white so uh, in the equation of r minus y g will be there and b will also be there because if it is pure red then only g and b are zero only r is one but if you add the white then g will have and b will have some value let me say 0.2 or 0.3 so as a result you can see that now length of this r minus y component will not be no longer only 0.7 so it will reduce it so you can see that the length of this r minus y is not a 0.7 if you add some white color now let us say if you keep on adding white 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 so you can see that more and more contribution of g and more and more contribution of b will be there so g and b will rise from 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 and so on so as a result you can see that r minus y component will get decrease also the b minus y component also decrease and as a result overall length of the vector also decreases now if you add too much white so let us assume that your red color pure red color becomes totally white so at that time you can see that this r minus y and b minus y will be zero because in white r g and b that is vr vg and vb all are one so if you put r g b vr vg vb one 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 so this two equations become zero so as a result you can see that length of the vector become zero so we can say that the length of the vector uh, represents the uh, saturation of your color how pure your color is okay so here uh, we can see that if the length of the vector is a maximum then we can say that it is fully saturated color maximum length is pure color but if you add some other color in this example we have considered that add white color so if you keep on adding other color your pure color become uh, desaturated color and the length of the vector reduces so here you can see that as, you, as we keep on adding the white length of the vector reduces and one time it will become pure white so there isn't any r minus y component there isn't any uh, b minus y component and length of the vector becomes zero so you can see that in the center only white color is there which represents uh, uh, the zero zero location of this plot so here uh, we, we come to know that length of the vector here length of the vector uh, represents the purity of the color or e it represents saturation if it is fully saturated that is 100 percent saturated means maximum length and it is zero percent saturations means it is having only white absence of color maybe white maybe add you uh, maybe maybe black so you can add any color into the pure color fine so here the concentration is uh, for chromium and signal two things are important its angle and its length angle represents the color of the chromium signal and length uh, represents the saturation of the chromium signal so let us move ahead so let us come to the vectroscope so vectroscope is nothing but a device which generates a vector plot yes vector plot of the video signal or you can say vector plot of a chromium signal because chromium signal is nothing but made up of uh, b minus y component and r minus y component so uh, vectorscope plots vector on the r minus y and b minus y axis and you can also call this plot as a polar plot yes and here the interesting thing is what the both axis of this polar plot are voltage because we know that in our oscilloscope uh, the x axis is nothing but time and y axis is nothing but the uh, voltage or amplitude okay so in this case both axes are voltage fine so that is the case of uh, vectorscope so uh, vectorscope uh, looks like uh, this one now uh, what we have to apply to the vectorscope so we have to apply the rf tv signal to the vectroscope and it will fetch the chrominance signal and it will display it on its screen so yes we require or we need one uh, device which can generate the rf signal so that you know it 
that we can generate the RF signal uh, with the help of pattern generator. So yes, uh, we need one pattern generator which will able to produce the RF signal for this uh, predefined patterns. And you have to apply the output of the pattern generator to the vectorscope. So uh, how the screen of vectorscope looks like? So let us discuss some more thing about vectorscope. So vectorscope screen will look like this one. So these are the graticals that are already marked on the screen of the vectorscope. Since it uh, generates a plot, vector plot or polar plot and uh, it uh, produces the vector of a, any cominant signal which is correspond to any color and here we can see that this TV system is nothing but a standardized system and for this standardized system if it is a red color then that pure red color will have its uh, fixed angle and its fixed corresponding magnitude so for each color there is already fixed angle and fixed magnitude so that's why you can see that this small squares are already displayed on the screen of the vectroscope and these square boxes are placed at the exact position of the vector corresponding to red color you can say that this this correspond to yellow color the square box this small square box correspond to green color cyan blue and magenta so you can see that the square boxes are already drawn on the screen of the vectorscope for this primary and secondary colors because this thing is standardized so for each color we do have a fixed angle for the tv system now uh, if uh, we apply pure red color signal yes we already learn in the pattern generator we can apply a, a, a unique color uh, onto the entire screen of the tv so let us say that we have produced the raster raster pattern which is displaying the pure red color on the tv screen so we already know that for the red color uh, there is some predefined length of the vector or chrominant signal and there is predefined angle so if we apply the signal rf signal corresponding to the pure red color signal only to the vectorscope then that vectorscope will plot the chrominant signal on its screen and if it is pure red color then vector will end up into the corresponding position that is fixed for the red color so here you can see that this green color vector which is ended into the box corresponding to red color so here you can see that your device or uh, is generating pure red color and that's why vectorscope displaying the vector which is falling into the perfect block of the red color now similarly if you apply some any other color to the vectorscope so let us say you apply the signal which is correspond to yellow color so vectorscope will fetch the chrominance signal and it will plot that onto the screen of vectorscope so if it is pure red no it is yellow color yes pure yellow color then uh, it, that that vector will end up in the box of the yellow color so similarly uh, let us go with the next color which is uh, cyan so if it is cyan color then yes it will plot the vector into the box of a cyan similarly for the case of blue so if it is blue color then obviously that vector will end up into the box corresponding to the blue color so uh, let us discuss about more uh, for the that that small boxes displayed on the uh, graticals so if, if, if i once again show you that look these are nothing but the uh, boxes so this is nothing but small box and yes one outer bigger box is there so let us understand this that uh, this box is represents what so uh, let us assume uh, uh, assume that uh, we are applying some signal on it 
and that signal is having a perfect uh, amplitude and perfect angle uh, for the corresponding color so let us say that the chrominance signal is having perfect amplitude and perfect uh, phase so that vector will end up into the center small square yes it will end up into the center of the small square so we can say that that chrominance signal is having perfect amplitude or magnitude of the vector and perfect phase but uh, in practical okay there may be possibility of some deviation yes deviation into the amplitude of the chrominant signal and there may be deviation into the phase of the chrominant signal so let us assume that first uh, that that amplitude deviation is there so let us say if amplitude deviation is there so rather than falling into the exact center of the small box your vector will end up okay uh, we will end up uh, with uh, some higher position uh, with respect to this center line or maybe end up at some lower position with uh, respect to this uh, center line so you can say that you are having some amplitude deviation or amplitude variations but here you can see that this vector is ending up within the box yes it is not crossing the box so you can say that so this amplitude deviation is how much so that amplitude deviation this within the box deviation is nothing but plus or minus 2.5 ire yes so this is called on upper side it is called plus 2.5 ire and lower side it is called minus 2.5 ire so that is amplitude deviation of plus or minus 2.5 ire and IRE is a unit uh, which is used in a TV system. So uh, one IRE is nothing but equal to 7.14 millivolt. Now here uh, let us assume that what if our uh, this vector this dot okay crosses this small box and it falls outside the box. So let us assume that case also so here we can see that this vector is ending up outside the small box okay maybe maybe excess or maybe short come so here we can see that your amplitude is too much amplified or it is attenuated okay it is falling outside the box so we can say that uh, that there is a change in the amplitude of this is nothing but this deviation with respect to center line is nothing but plus 20 ire on upper side and it is minus 20 IRE on the lower side so this big box yes it represents plus or minus 20 IRE uh, deviation in the amplitude but in general it, this is called too much deviation this is called intolerable deviation so it is better that if your signal is called better signal if its amplitude is falling or length of the vector your vector is falling inside the small box then it is fine that much amplitude deviation is tolerable but if your vector ends up outside the box maybe above maybe below then you have to calibrate um, your, your your circuit or you have to you have to take some step to overcome this problem you have to find out where is the problem so that is uh, the uh, amplitude deviation and uh, similarly we can say that phase deviation may occur phase deviation may occur so so let us see uh, what if phase deviation occurs so here uh, we can say that if your dot is on center of this small box then you can say that this is zero degree yes zero degree you can see that this vertical line okay if that is uh, exact center uh, that vector enters ends up at the exact center then you can say that um, there is a there is a zero degree fish uh, shift or phase error but instead of that if your if if your dot or vector is moving towards either left or moving towards right with respect to this center vertical line then you can say that there is some phase deviation yes and that phase deviation is nothing but towards uh, left it is called uh, plus 2.5 degree deviation towards right it is called minus 2.5 degree 
deviation and same as the amplitude deviation if this phase deviation is within this square box then you can you can call it as it, it is tolerable but what if your vector ends up outside the box so you can say that if too much phase deviation is there you can say that this 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 vector ends up with uh, too much left side with respect to the center vertical line and this this uh, the, this vector in this case it, it ends up at the uh, too much right side with respect to the center line so this kind of uh, phase deviation is too much and that phase deviation is indicated by on right hand side it is minus 10 degree and on uh, left hand side it is plus 10 degree so this box represents okay so this big box represents uh, plus or minus 10 degree of phase deviation and plus or minus 20 degree uh, t not degree plus or minus 20 IRE of amplitude deviation fine so uh, let us move ahead so if you apply the color bar signal onto the vectorscope so it will uh, put vector or it will display the vector for each color present in the color signal so here you can see that uh, since uh, eight colors are present but here six dots are produced okay and here we can see that uh, out of this eight different colors this one is white and last one is black so white and black are nothing but intensities that, that there is absence of color so that's why out of this uh, eight only uh, six are displayed and rest of two are nothing but only intensities and in that case uh, here uh, r g b one 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 so r minus y and b minus y component vanish and length of the vector becomes zero and in the case of black your rgb is 0 0 0 so there isn't any r minus y and b minus y component so in two extreme cases uh, your vector length is 0 so only for six different colors uh, all vectors are plotted into the corresponding boxes now here uh, you may think that uh, how this vector scope is able to produce six different vectors at a time but actually uh, it plotty it, it plots a one vector per time so here you can see that it, it, it first, first plots red uh, yellow color uh, yellow colors vector then cyan colors vector then green colors vector then magenta colors vector one by one one by one but this scope is plotting vectors with uh, too much fast rate so uh, we cannot differentiate that and we will feel that it, it, it is plotting all six vector at a time but no at a instant it is plotting only one vector corresponding to instantaneous value of the color signal so uh, now uh, here uh, we learn that chrominant signal is nothing but the uh, vector addition of r minus y component and uh, b minus y component but in a practical system to avoid the over modulation this r minus y and b minus y are scaled down so here you can see that r minus y is uh, scaled down to up to 90 percent yes it is multiplied with 0.877 so now r, r minus y is 90 percent scaled down and that scaled down version of r minus y is denoted by v and similarly uh, b minus y component is scaled down to 50 percent so this is multiplied with 0.490 approximately 0.5 so b minus y is scaled down to 50 percent and that is called u so here you can see that your x-axis now after scaled down version your b minus y becomes u and uh, r minus y becomes v so this kind of things are used in tv standard and the standard in which this thing is used uh, is nothing but nts standard and full form of this nts sc standard is a national television standard committee and this standard is mostly used in uh, north america for analog tv transmission okay but uh, there is one problem attached with this standard so let us discuss about that so we learned that uh, for a chrominant signal uh, each color each color uh, will have unique angle and uh, yes unique angle 
and depending on the saturation it will have length of the vector so let us take an example that um, for example the transmitter wants to transmit a color r having a angle theta so let us say uh, transmitter transmitted a color r some color r whose angle is theta so let us assume that here you can see that some some color r is there and that is represented by angle theta now let us assume that during the transmission some phase error is introduced and at the receiver uh, receiver will get the signal with the phase error so here you can see that a received signal with some phase error so that you can see that uh, initial original angle is theta some phase error delta is there so received angle will be theta plus delta so now if received signals angle is no longer theta it is theta plus delta so we can say that theta change color change so here at the receiver we will have some other color r1 instead of the color r that transmitter has transmitted so in this case during transmission if phase error introduces then we will receive some other phase so you can say that we will receive some other color so that is not a good thing so how they overcome so for that they have suggested some idea uh, so let us go through it so uh, we know that uh, in tv system okay, it produces pictures uh, line by line okay so let us assume that uh, lines numbering are in sequence let us assume that line number n then line number n plus one then line number n plus two and so on okay so let us assume that for a red color or some color r let us say uh, some color r uh, angle is 45 degree so we can say that that colors b minus y component is b minus y or it's a scaled down version u component is modulated with zero degree carrier and that some color r's r minus y component or it's a scaled down version uh, v component is modulated with 90 degree shifted carrier so the idea is for some color r it's b minus y component is modulated with zero degree carrier and r minus y component is modulated with plus 90 degree carrier for line number n so this is applicable to only single line now for the next line n number one n n plus one let us assume that the r minus y component of that color is now modulated with minus 90 degree carrier instead of plus 90 degree carrier so here you can see that the next line yes line number n plus one whose r minus y component is modulated with minus 90 degree carrier so here you can see that the resultant phase will be minus 45 degree so here the idea is what for consecutive lines you just modulate r minus y component for line number n with plus 90 degree carrier and for next line n plus 1 you just modulate the r minus y component with minus 90 degree carrier once again n plus 2 modulate it with plus 90 degree carrier then n plus 3 once again modulate r minus y component with minus 90 so r minus y component is alternately modulated with plus 90 carrier and minus 90 carrier for each consecutive line now here as a result what happens let us assume that this signal is transmitted and during transmission once again an error is introduced phase error of 5 degree plus 5 degree so uh, this component which is having a 45 degree angle will become 45 plus 5 will become 50 degree and the component which is having minus 45 angle with addition of plus 5 degree error this become minus 40 so at the receiver whatever the received signal will have two different kind of phases which is 50 degree and uh, minus 40 degree now at the receiver 
this minus phase is removed and once again this is restored to the positive value so this minus 40 which is which is which is inverted okay and restored to the plus 40 so at the receiver we can say that the line number n will have or will display the color uh, color whose angle is 50 degree and line number n plus 1 will display the color uh, who which is represented by uh, 40 degree angle so here we can see that so uh, we can see that line number n produces a color which correspond to 50 degree line number n plus 1 next line displays the color correspond to 40 degree then once again 50 degree color 40 degree color 50 degree color and 40 degree color so we can say that alter uh, consecutive lines are displaying alternate colors 50 degree color 40 degree color 50 degree 40 degree so here you can see that line number n displays 50 degree color and line number n plus 1 displays the 40 degree corresponding color but the thing is what this spacing of this line is very much small and we cannot distinguish or our eye cannot distinguish the spacing or, or unique color for that two consecutive lines so as a result our eye will integrate both of the color so here you can see that viewers eye observe the average color of line number n and n plus one since actually this both are displaying different color color corresponding to 50 degree and color corresponding to 40 degree but due to the limitation of i it will see the average value so yes we can see that the average of 50 and 40 is nothing but 45 so with the idea of modulating the r minus y component on plus 90 degree carrier and minus 90 degree carrier on alternate line um, one can suppress the phase error which is introduced in the transmission and we, we can we can uh, reproduce this uh, or we can uh, let the user observe the same color that transmitter wants to uh, transmit so this scheme of alternating the uh, phase of the sub carrier of the r minus y component for the alternate line is called the phase alteration line by line so here uh, we can say that the b minus y component is always modulated on zero degree carrier but r minus y component is modulated with plus 90 degree and minus 90 degree carrier for the alternate line so as a result we can suppress the phase shift error occur during the transmission so this scheme is called phase alteration by line or it is also called phase alteration line by line and yes this tv standard is adopted in india so hope uh, uh, you know that what is all system that is phase alteration line by line so here we can see that uh, in ntsc there isn't any phase alteration r minus y component is always modulated with uh, plus 90 degree carrier but if it is a PAL system then r minus y is modulated with plus 90 degree for line number n and minus 90 degree carrier for line number n plus 1 now here we can see that for a PAL system phase alteration line by line for a single color single color yes for a single color vector will have two positions yes two positions so let us assume that uh, for the color any color r okay these are the corresponding two po two positions so if r is for plus 90 degree component if r color is uh, produced on first quadrant so the corresponding minus 90 degree component will be plotted on the fourth quadrant so you can see that for single color you will have a two different vector positions so here you can see that for red color let us assume that this is second quadrant 
for red color and, and for its 90 degree component so its corresponding minus 90 degree component this will fall into the exactly into the third quadrant so for each color we will have two positions of the vector that you can see that for red color this is the position for the plus 90 degree component and small r indicate the position of the minus 90 degree component similarly for uh, blue so this capital indicate the position of the plus 90 degree component and the small letter indicate the position of the minus 90 degree so here you can see that the position of the all vectors are reflected with respect to x axis so if uh, your vectorscope is able to produce both of them so here are some difference in the graticals will be there onto the display of vectorscope then in case of ntsc there isn't any phase alteration so uh, here you can see that okay only one position is there for one color that is for r yellow green but if it is spal system then you will have two different positions for each color so that's why you can see that for r box is over here and its corresponding minus 90 degree component of box is over here so that will be same for any color for cyan uh, magenta whatever color you will have two different position for a single color now this uh, lines are there onto the display of the vectorscope so what these lines are so these lines two lines are nothing but the reference line for uh, plotting the other angles so these all angles the squares these all angles are plotted with respect to this uh, reference line like uh, in uh, uh, in 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 cro we do have some reference line or ground line with respect to which we measure the amplitude similarly this all phases are plotted with respect to this reference line and this reference line are nothing but 0 and 90 degree color sub carrier yes you can uh, see that uh, okay uh, they are 90 degree apart these two lines are 90 degree apart so these are nothing but the reference line and with respect to uh, which all other angles are plotted so hope you get some overview of the vectorscope and what it displays thank you